Although they've never said anything to suggest that this was going to be the case, you already have the feeling that it is. Hi, I'm Logan T. Smith for Opinion Subject to Change here to talk about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. But first, this video is not sponsored by non-standard light bulb fixtures. Like this one with the two little posts that you twist. I got two different sizes of these in my place. And then these ones, which you might be going, Logan, that's just a standard candelabra one. It's not. This is one millimeter smaller. These are just to make it annoying to try to replace light bulbs in your new place. So Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, just like the sequels to the original Jurassic Park, something happens and they've got to go back. In this case, it's not anything that any particular person has done. It's just a natural thing. A volcano is erupting and they've got to go back to save the dinosaurs. Things don't go quite as planned, and not everyone is being 100% honest about what is really going on. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom takes place about three years after Jurassic World. The way the story flows and the theming of this is a little bit different than Jurassic World, and the overall feeling of the movie is somewhat different as well. There's a bit of a tonal shift partway through the movie that shifts it further into the horror aspects. I don't think that the movie's really built to do that. It hurts the overall flow of the film, I think, when that happens. There's some neat things that are done in that sort of horror portion of the movie, but it's mostly an action movie. It's a good action movie. There's lots of great action in this. Lots of cool sequences. There's lots, there's tons of great dinosaurs. The characters are portrayed fairly well. There's a few new characters in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Mileage may vary on the characters. <laughs> uh, there's one new character in particular that I found quite annoying. Um, another one that I thought was quite good. And then a third that is really quite a mixed bag on there. Just like the previous Jurassic Park movies, it looks amazing and it sounds amazing. The story overall is pretty good, with some pretty impressive uh, visual foreshadowing so that when events happen later in the movie, although they've never said anything to suggest that this was going to be the case, you already have the feeling that it is, if that makes sense. There's, there's sort of visual foreshadowing going on in the movie that's done quite well, and I thought that was, was really good. The violence in this one is a little bit different than in Jurassic World, in that it is sort of more personal, if that makes sense. There's less people around. It's not like a great big amusement park full of people. And there's a lot of sort of look-away violence where you know someone's about to die, but you don't see it happen. You see the reactions to it instead. That's it. There is also on screen some brutal stuff like dismemberment and uh, death, of course. As far as course language here, I think it's around the same level as Jurassic World. I haven't looked, but sort of in that medium range. Uh, so this movie, which is not a surprise, is for sort of mid to older teenagers and adults, of course, not, not for kids at all. There's one <laughs> very subtle sexual reference, but there's, there's really nothing to be worried about at all. I think they did a good job on the soundtrack here, uh, making it so that it uses the motifs of Jurassic Park, but manages to bring them into the new movie in a meaningful way, so that it's not just exactly the same, uh, but it's also quite familiar still. Humor in this is hit and miss. Like I said, there's one character I think is mostly there intended to be a comic relief character, and I find him the most annoying of everybody in the whole movie. I think the cinematography in this is quite good, and, and like I said, they have that shift to the horror genre. In that, they do some really neat things to make it feel different for that moment. Now, like I said, this sort of take you out of the rest of the flow of the movie, that things are progressing a certain way, characters are behaving a certain way, and then we sort of get into this horror section where everyone sort of changes their behavior a little bit, or some of the key characters involved in that change their behavior a little bit. But cinematography-wise, that's a great sequence. One of the really unfortunate things about this movie is that even though the story all makes sense together, and the ending makes sense with the story, I find the ending frustrating. It makes sense. The character's motivations make sense. I just don't like it. <laughs> it kind of leaves you, 
or at least me, coming away from the movie with a rather negative feeling. And it almost feels like they allowed the characters to make the decisions they did so that they could have a particular sequel. Does that make sense? <laughs> and that's annoying to me. There are several new hero dinosaurs in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, meaning that there's some that are kind of the main character dinosaurs. And I think they've done a pretty good job of giving those dinosaurs an individual character, that they behave a certain way that is unique to them, that we haven't seen other dinosaurs behave in the same way. All in all, even though Fallen Kingdom leaves sort of an unpleasant taste in my mouth at the end of the movie, I did quite enjoy it. There's a lot of great things in this movie. It looks great. The HDR is outstanding. There's explosions and lava and stuff in it that just look really, really nice. The surround sound, of course, is fantastic, just as you would expect. The action flows quite well. The story makes sense. This is a pretty good movie overall. I quite like it. I give it an 8 out of 10. It's a should watch, but don't let the kids see it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and have a great day. Bye.